In this lecture, we continue our discussion about files, how to read from and uh, how to write to files. Okay, a quick recap. Uh, so far, uh, we discussed different data structures, including um, integer, float, strings, list, and dictionaries. We also discussed loops for uh, repeating an action and selection a statement, like two-way uh, selection a statement, if else, or if we need to check several uh, conditions, uh, we use if, l if, and else um, format. And we also discuss random numbers, how we can generate uh, random numbers, um, also how we can handle text files. For example, we, last time we generated random numbers and then uh, we saved the result in a text file. We also um, opened a text file and then uh, read data from uh, that file. Uh, also, just as a reminder, Python is a strong type language. It's case sensitive. So we always need to check the typos if we get syntax errors. And on a while true loop, um, we had a few examples so far that when we use the while true um, format, we always need to see break. Otherwise, we will have infinite loops. Also, when we were uh, reading from text files, uh, we played with uh, changing data structure. So uh, we cannot apply arithmetic operations to a string. If you remember, we changed the data structure to integer or float in order to be able to add them up. So they might look like a number, but if their data structure is a string, we need to change it. Also, uh, reading from writing to a text file, uh, we mentioned that um, file is an object in Python. And when we open it, we need to close it to see the final output. So if you forget the last um, line of code, like closing the file, then you are not going to see the result. So first we open the file or create that uh, file and then uh, we write some information to the file and then we close it. Now uh, I would like to discuss the alternative way for uh, creating files, reading uh, from or writing to files. Here uh, you can see two examples we discussed last time. One is in writing mode, the other one is in reading mode. Here you can see with as a statement, with open so we open this um, text file, we are in writing mode as file. So when we go with this format, we don't have to close the file. So uh, often time I prefer this format. They do the same thing. So when you go with the with as a statement, then you have the for loop and then you write numbers. Then you don't need to close um, the text file. Uh, on the other example, when we want to um, calculate the summation of uh, numbers. So we initialize the variable, as you can see here. We open, we are the file in reading mode as file, and then we change the data structure into integer. We add them up and then we print the result. And you can see that there is no need to cause the text file. Let's quickly uh, implement these two pieces of code in notebook. So with, pay attention to the color, it's a reserved word and its color is green. With open integers.txt, we are in writing mode as file. So now this txt is a file and it will be treated as an object. Now we have our for loop for count in range 500, we want to uh, generate 500 random numbers. Number random, I also need to import random module. We use randint function to generate numbers between one and 500. And then we call file dot write method. 
the data structure is a string number plus backward slash n so one number uh, per line let me import random library first and when we run it then we can open the integers takes file and we have 500 random numbers now let's say we want to add them up so we initialize a variable but this time we go with uh, read as format so with open integers we just created this text file now we are in reading mode as file now we have our for loop which goes uh, through all lines in the file number we change the extract data structure to integer. We read it. Augmented assignment. And at the end, we just print the result. So the sum is this variable. Let's run this. We run this again, and now you can see the result. So we always pay attention to this circle over here on the right side. When it's a full circle or fill circle, it means that it's running, but now the kernel is idle. You can always restart, clear output, and then uh, run your piece of program. Okay. So as you can see here, we um, read the input data from the text file and we are not uh, using any close uh, a statement because we don't need to close the file when we go with this format. Either way is fine in our class, but remember if you go with the first alternative, then you do need to close your file. Otherwise you don't see the output. With that, we have a review quiz here. Speaking of, um, strings as a data structure so we have a variable uh, refers to this string no way and now the expression data one evaluates to which option so again we can access to each character by their position the first one the first uh, character's position is zero and the following is one so zero one data one evaluates to o the right answer is option B. Okay. Now here we can see another example for uh, text files. We want to write a script that prompts a user for the names of two text files. So we want our user to enter the names of two text files. The contents of the first file should be input and written to the second file. So it's like a copy paste right whatever the content is we want to um uh, we want to uh, paste it in the second file okay so um we want to um code this together again the very first step is to ask the user so we are going to see to input a statement okay and then we are going to define a variable which uh, contains the information in the first file. And then we open the second file in uh, writing mode. And then we uh, assign the content of that variable to, that, uh, to the second file. Now let's see how we can do that. So I'm defining one variable called in name 
so it's arbitrary you can go with anything else its data structure is a string with input a statement enter the input file name colon and then we assign the the value to this variable. Another variable for output name, I define out name. Again, it is a string. Input a statement. Now enter the output file name. Okay. So we receive the name. The next step is to open the input file and read its content and save it to a variable. So I'm going to add a comment here that we want to open the input file and read the text or content. So we are going to see the open statement. So I'm defining um, a new variable, input file, open, the in name, and we are in reading mode because we want to read its content. I define another variable called text input file we just defined and then I apply read method so read everything in that file and then assign it to the text variable so so far I have a variable which has the content of my first uh, file the, or the input file. The next step is to open the output file and write the text or content. So I'm going to add a comment here. Open the output file and write the text or content. So I define a variable out file, I open it, we have the name for this variable because we asked user, so it's out name. Now we are in writing mode. Out file dot write, write the content in the text variable. And remember, we should close it. So out file dot close. So we see the output. OK. Now let's run this. Enter the input file name. So we just created integers.txt. Let's say this is my input. Integers.txt. So we want to copy its content and paste it in another text file. Now enter the output file name. I go with test.txt. Okay. Done. So now let's open these two text files. So we have integers here. We should have test as well. And their content should be the same. Okay. Integer, you can see these numbers. And we should see the exact numbers here in text in test uh, text file. The content should be the same, identical, and it's the case here. So hopefully, with this example, uh, you learn more about um, opening text files, reading from them, uh, writing to text files, and we are going to use um, these techniques a lot because we usually. Um, work with Excel sheets or text files to, uh, to populate our model.
Okay. Now, uh, here's an important thing. What if we want to read data from Excel sheets? So far, we just discussed the text file. Now, to read data from Excel sheet, we have an example and you have um, that you can see in this slide. First, we need to import a new library. That way we can open Excel sheets. So I would like to go through uh, this code line by line. So we import XLRD. It means that now we can open Excel sheets, but then we need to specify the file location. File location here. So let's say this um, file is in my desktop. And then the Excel uh, file is named customers.xlsx. I'm going to upload this file to Canvas so you do have this Excel file. Then I define a variable called workbook. We just open the Excel sheet. It means that now we can go through uh, sheets and uh, columns. So open workbook and this file location. Then in Excel sheets, we have several sheets. We need to know which sheet we want to read from. So sheet equal to workbook.sheet by name, and these are all reserved words. But then in parentheses, we need to put in the name of the sheet. So in this example, it's potable. And I'm going to open the Excel sheet you're going to see. Then I define an empty dictionary potable customer time, and then one empty uh, list. I initialize a variable, and here you see the while true loop. First off, we have the while true. It means that we do need to see break. So we have a break here. And you see a try and accept block, which is uh, new here. The try block uh, lets you test a block of code for errors. The accept block lets you handle the error. Okay. And then under try, so we want to uh, read values. So sheet dot cell underline value, which we want to go through different rows, and then we fix the column. Column is zero. Then customers p dot append. We have seen uh, append before, which adds the value to the end of the list. So to populate an empty list, we use append. And then for t in time, there are five time periods here. It means that we have uh, uh, five um, columns. Now I'm populating the dictionary. For populating a dictionary, we need to have keys. And here, keys um, are a pair of two items, C, is the customer here, and T is time. And then for each pair, we assign its value. And then we update I because we want to go through uh, all rows. And then here for except index error, we have break. So after try block, so we read data from um, the, the Excel sheet from columns and rows. And then we have except block, except uh, index error. The index error is one of the more basic and uh, common exceptions in Python. As it is raised wherever attempting to access an, in, um, an index that is outside the bounds of a list. So that's very helpful when we want to go through different um, rows and then uh, populate our dictionary. So we go with index error. And if that index is outside uh, the bound of a list, then it breaks. Okay, now let's try to implement this. To do that, this is the Excel sheet that I was referring to. Okay, so the first column we have customers and then for each customer we have demand but demand for different periods. So each column here, this is the demand in uh, time one, demand time two, three, four, five. So these are the columns. And for each row, you can see we have seven hundred and seventy-six customers. 
So we want to uh, go through all rows and then add each value to the end of the list for customers. And for our dictionary, we define a pair of customer and the time period. So the demand for customer zero at time one, demand for customer zero at time two, and that's the, how we um, define keys for our dictionary. Now let's try to implement this. And also, you can see here in this Excel sheet, we have different sheets. That's why you need to uh, open the right sheet. So this sheet is named uh, potable because it shows the demand for potable water or drinking water. Now let's try to implement this in Python. First, I need to import XLRD. Then I need to specify my file location. So this is a variable, you can change the name. So my file, to find your the location of your file here, right click, properties, and this will be the location. Make it a forward a slash. And then the Excel file customers dot XL SX. Now we need to open the file. So I define a variable named workbook XLRD. I use this module then this function open underline workbook and its location is stored in file location variable. So let's run this first. There is a typo here, workbook. Let's rerun it. Now we need to say which sheet. So I define sheet equal to, this is a variable, workbook dot sheet underline by underline name. And the name is potable in this example. We run it. And now I can define my variables. So the first variable, the potable demand for drinking water, underline customer, and again, this is arbitrary. You can go with a short version. Underline time, and it is its data structure is a dictionary. So you see curly braces. And then for customers, it's a sequence of items, their ID, so I just go with a list. We have five time periods. So I define time equal to range five. Okay. Now we need to initialize a variable and we have the while loop. So the, for the while loop, we want to go through all rows and columns. While true colon. Now to handle errors, we, we go with the try and accept block. So try colon and then whatever you want to read from. Define a variable sheet dot cell underline value okay. i zero okay i shows the rows and the second argument shows the column the first column by default is zero okay so go to the first column and then read all rows okay. 
Now I can populate my um, list, which is customer P, using append method. So add C to this, to the end of the list. Now for T in time. Now I want to populate my dictionary. My dictionary has a key and the key is a pair of customer ID and the time period. Customer zero time one, customer zero time two. Okay. So we need that for loop and then this dictionary, I'm going to copy and paste to make sure that I don't have any syntax error. Okay. And now the key. The key is C, which is the customer ID and the time. And its value is again sheet dot and sheet is referring to this variable that we have defined here. So, underline value, go through different rows, and the column is t plus 1. Here, time is a range of 5, so its first value is 0. So, 0 plus 1, it means that go to the second column, and then all rows, that would be the demand for that customer and time one. And then we update i is equal to i plus one. And then we have the except block. I'm using the index error. And then we break if we want into this error. Now let's run this. Typo here. Okay. Now let's look at these two variables, customers P is a list. So I expect to see a list, a square brackets, zero, one, two, three, all the way to seven hundred and seventy six. And let's check here. That's what we have in the first column. Seven hundred and seventy six. Okay. Now let's check our dictionary. You see curly braces, you see keys, which is a couple of items. Customer's ID 0, 1 through 766 and their demand. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. There are five time periods starting from 0. And the same for the first customer. The same for the second customer and you can see their value that we read from text. So in this example, we learned how we can read data from Excel sheet. We also learned about the try and exit block, block that how we can handle errors, and specifically when we are um, populating lists or dictionaries in case that uh, the index is outside the bound, then it handle, it breaks, then um, you will be out of the world uh, loop. And we printed the variables. We first started with defining empty variables and then we populated them and uh, we checked their data structure. 
Now, uh, here's another example. Uh, usually, um, populating empty list and dictionary is challenging in the beginning. But I hope that with these two examples in this lecture, um, you learn it perfectly. So you can see here another example which shows how to populate empty list and dictionary using method with discussed. So we always use append, as you can see here, uh, to populate a list. And then for dictionary, we use a square bracket, we specify the key, and then we assign its value. This example that you see here uh, uh, prompts uh, the user to uh, enter five names. So for i in range five. So we want to add, uh, add, we want the user to enter five names and then we randomly generate the salary to that person, for that person. So we use the random module randin function. So we randomly generate a number between these two. Now we want to have two lists. The first list, which represent the names, a sequence of strings. The second list, salaries, a sequence of salaries. And also we want to have a dictionary because we can combine them. We can have a dictionary or a variable which has the name as the key and their salary as a value. So let's try to uh, run this. So technically with one variable as a dictionary, you can save uh, both uh, pieces of information, name and their salary. So I import random module. I define empty list, name list, salary list, and then a dictionary which has both name, dig, and then you see curly braces here. For i in range 5, Input a statement. Enter name. Let's go. I want to go with enter name one, name two. So here I can combine two strings. I plus one. I starts with zero. I plus one would be one, so now you would see enter name one, and then you will see enter name two. And then plus colon. Define a variable named salary or sal, which is a random number between 45,000 and let's say 98,000. Now we can populate our variables. Name list or namely is a list. So I use the append method. The value is name. So it adds name to the end of that list. And then we have salary, our next uh, list, salary list, again dot append, cell, and then the name dict, which is our dictionary, we use a square bracket, name is the key, and the value is the salary, the randomly generated one. And eventually we want to print our dictionary. Let's run this. Enter name one. Okay. Go with, let's say, Shima. Okay, here's a typo, salary. Let's see if, okay, go with Shima. 
um, Jack, Jill, John, and Bob. Now this is our dictionary. So the names are keys and then their values are the salary. So hopefully with these two examples, uh, you learn how um, we can play with files, how we can read from text files and the Excel sheets and how we can uh, write to the text files, how we can save the result of our algorithm and also how we um, use the data structures we learned so far uh, to save the information.